Hello and welcome to another CG tip. What I want to do with this video is cover two things. Firstly, I want to go over how to set up and use Maya's advanced twist tools, which are found in this spline IK handle. What I also want to do is update the spine we created during my real-time creature rigging course. So it also uses this system, rather than the node-based one we created during the workshop. So I'm basically covering two things with this one video, and what you will end up with is a stronger, more robust spine rig. Okay, let's get started. So here we have the alien we rigged in my real-time creature rigging course, which is linked below. As you can see, the lower spine works as we rotate the hip control, and the upper spine moves independently using the shoulder control. So this setup works well already. The issue is it was a bit of a pain to set up. If I select the spline IK handle here, you will see that the roll and twist attributes are connected to something because they are tagged yellow. Let's open the node editor. So this is the network we created to achieve the spine control we have now. What we did was use nodes to control the roll and twist attributes, which allowed us to get more control out of the spine. If you've created a spline IK based spine, you will know that getting translation movement is relatively easy, because all you need to do is deform the base curve. The issue comes when you want the spine to twist, so we use the roll and twist attributes here to achieve this. Let's break the connections on those attributes, so we are taking the spline IK back to basics and removing the influence from the nodes that we added in in the previous video. I'll optimise the scene too to delete them and clean things up a little. OK. If I rotate the hips now, we have no twisting. Let's turn on wireframe so we can see the model deforming. There, we can see that the legs follow, but the pelvis doesn't. The same with the shoulders. The arms move with the control, but the upper spine doesn't. So we need to fix this. And to do that, we will use the advanced twist controls. Select the IK handle and go to the attribute editor. What you're looking for is the IK solver tab. Under here, you will find the advanced twist controls tab. I'll copy this tab to keep it open. OK, there we go. So, I will admit that I have dabbled with these over the years, but I could never get them to work correctly or achieve the results I needed, so I never really invested any more time in them or used them. Recently though, I decided to sit down and try and get my head around them and hopefully come up with an understanding which I could share with you all. Let's hide the model and bring up the joints. Here we have the spine joints, and the rotational axes are visible so we can see how the joints are rotating. The first thing we need to take note of is where the IK handle is in the chain. Here it is, right at the top. So first we need to enable the twist controls. I'm not sure if you noticed, but when we did that, the spine twisted. We are getting some movement with the controls now, but not a lot. Let's bring back the models. I think we can see the movement better with them visible now. So you see, as I rotate the shoulder control, we are getting some collapsing with the model. The hip control isn't working well either, so the default values aren't fit for this rig. The first thing I'm going to change is the world up type. Because we're going to be using two controls, one to twist each end of the joint chain, we need to choose Object Rotation Up, Start and End. This will open up the options below. If you remember, the IK handle was at the top of the spine here. So this will use the World Up Object 2 slot here. We know we want the shoulder control to twist this area, so add that into the text box. The opposite end will be controlled with the hip control. We use this and not the main cog control because the hip control is actually sat beneath the cog control in the hierarchy. 
so it will inherit its rotation and in turn control the twist too. So we add that to the world up object input box. We have now told the spline IK which controls it should use to twist the curve. But as you can see, we still have problems. So let's look at the other attributes. Next, we need to update the forward axis and the up axis. And this is where I used to get confused. You see, I assumed this was based on the scene. So I thought forward axis was which joint axis pointed forwards. Also, up axis was which joint axis pointed up. So if we look at our joints orientations, forward axis should be Z and up axis should be Y, right? Well, no. What these refer to is the joints. So the forward axis is which axis points down the joint chain. It doesn't matter if it's a spine which is vertical like this or a snake which is horizontal. All this tool is interested in is which axis is pointing towards the IK handle. So in this instance, it's the Y axis. Things look much worse now, but bear with me. We now need to change the up axis so it's not the same. And it doesn't really matter what you change this to at this stage. So let's use positive Z. We can always come back and change these once the next set of attributes are updated. What we need to do now is update the up vector attributes. At the moment, they are both set to one along the Y axis, which is the second column. So let's zero those out. What we want to do is make sure these match the up axis. So we need to add one into the third Z channel. Okay, so that's looking much better now. Let's give it a try. Okay, shoulders look good. And the hips work now too. And both are independent of each other, so we have more control as we pose the spine. If you remember with the real-time creature rigging course, we had to also add in support for the root control to stop the spine flipping and twisting as it rotated to extreme angles. Well, if you use the advanced twist controls, this is all taken care of internally. So the character is stable no matter where it is. And the cog control also affects the lower spine too. So that's just a short video showing you how to use the advanced twist controls, just in case you were a little confused with them as I was. Before I go, I just want to quickly show you how changing the up axis to X instead affects the spine. As I said, it doesn't really matter what you set this to as long as it's not the same as the forward axis. And you also update the up vector attributes to match. So these are all set to X now, and the spine still works exactly as it did before. One important thing to point out though, is you will need to adjust these settings if your controls orientations don't match the joints. With this rig, they do, so that's why this setup works. But now you understand how the twist controls work, once you get the forward axis set, you can experiment with the other attributes to get the results you need. Okay, there we go, that's another video over. Thanks for watching right to the end, and make sure you also check out some of the other free videos and courses I have available. You can find links to all these on the screen now, and in the description below. Remember, to help support future content and keep these videos free, visit the Ant CGI store, or join the Ant CGI club. Alternatively, if you would just like to show your appreciation for these videos, why not treat me to a coffee at my coffee page? Again, the link is on the screen now and in the description below. Thanks again for watching, this is AntCGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.